On this episode of The Turnbuckle, we have backstage news on WWE's reported hiring freeze. There's still a brand split happening. And we also have backstage news on Santana's current AEW status. Folks, we're hitting your favorite wrestling movie with some wrestling news because it's time for The Turnbuckle. Fightful has shared backstage news regarding WWE and hiring new talent. According to the report, the talent that spoke with Fightful are claiming that the company is going through a hiring freeze because so far this year, the promotion has not been hiring any main roster talent. The sources that spoke with Fightful have speculated that Vince McMahon's return and talks about the impending sale were just a few reasons behind the so-called freeze. WWE's sale was made official on April 3rd. The promotion was purchased by Aria Manuel's Endeavor Group. Since the sale, it appears that McMahon has found himself back in with creative. As reported earlier this week, he was, quote, personally and heavily involved with this week's episode of Raw, which resulted in him wanting rewrites of the script only minutes before the show began. Fightful was told that Triple H wanted to have former NWA world champion Nick Aldis join the company, but like other potential hires before him, including names like Tamatonga and Brent Cage, has been, quote, left out in the cold right when McMahon returned as the executive chairman of WWE. The firing of James Kimball was another reason why several that were on WWE's radar had no contact after the company had shown interest. Kimball had been WWE's senior vice president of talent operations and strategy before the company let him go back in February due to an undisclosed HR violation. Kimball had been with the company since 2020. But I don't think that there is a hiring freeze going on. I think obviously the hiring freeze is happening for, you know, the whole like um, transitional region, regions, yeah, reasons. And they got to like, you know, shift this out and put that there. And hold on, we'll get to you in a second. We just have to figure this out. That goes up there. They have to like alphabetize everything. All right, where are the papers? Well, the, 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 make the papers look nice. Okay, put that right there. Sorry, hit the microphone. Put that right there. You know, once they have, again, like I said, once they have everything like, sort it out and everything uh then you know we're gonna start hearing more people uh, yeah so like i said we're gonna have to wait and see uh if this hiring freeze is still gonna be going on after let's see if it still happens like after this week because after this week and we're still in the hiring freeze i think at that point it's like all right i i, I don't think this is a hiring freeze anymore i think it's man it's just gatekeeping at this point you know so only time will tell Next, there's still a brand split. Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez discussed the WWE draft on Wrestling Observer Radio. Meltzer did not seem enthused when it was announced by Triple H on Friday that the draft would begin in a few weeks. Isn't that the silliest thing in the world when the Usos and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are on every show every week, Meltzer asked. Everybody just goes show to show, Alvarez added. But Triple H says now we have a draft where he says everybody is eligible. Alvarez assumed that we may see some people from NXT being called up, but asked what the point was considering the Bland's Brit had largely been forgotten since Triple H came to power last year, with most wrestlers appearing on both Raw and SmackDown whenever possible. Alvarez argued that that was for the better. There's no indication that life is for the better with the draft, Alvarez said. If anything, there's evidence that life is better without a draft. Meltzer added that while the draft shows usually did ratings, those ratings have been down in recent weeks as people have learned that it ultimately doesn't matter what show a person's on. I think the problem is like, do you remember the wildcard rule? Man, remember when WWE was just an absolute zoo? So, uh, alright. I, okay, you got the Brawling Brutes on SmackDown, right? You got, you got Imperium on SmackDown. You got, uh, well, they're not even Legato Del Fantasma anymore. Apparently they're being changed to LWO now. Uh, on on SmackDown, you got Shinsuke Nakamura. He's gonna be on SmackDown. You got LA Knight. He's gonna be on. He's also on SmackDown. Xavier Woods is on SmackDown because I don't know. That's where LA Knight was. Who else is on SmackDown? Uh, Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt is on SmackDown despite the fact that you haven't seen him in like eight years. There are people right on their respective brands. There is a brand split. I do agree that there are people who kind of, the Usos are kind of just going wherever they want. I'm going to go ahead and throw that in the middle of kayfabe and say that the only reason why they're doing that is because they're with the Bloodline and Roman can be on both Raw and SmackDown, technically because he has to be. And I mean, it's the Usos. I, I, they're in the bloodline. They're gonna go wherever they really please. Okay, I, I don't really you really think Solo Sokoa is gonna stand there and be like Gah, I can't go to smack. I mean, I can't go to rock. Gosh darn it. Gafoygan. I mean, uh, golly gee willikers. What am I gonna do? Well, he's not gonna care. I highly doubt that that matters. 
Also, again, you got Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens being the double champions right now. Why would they stay to one brand that doesn't make any sense? I'm looking forward to the brand. Man, I'm looking forward to the brand split, and hopefully, you know, they stick with it, and it doesn't get super confusing, because obviously Meltzer and Alvarez are not fans of it. Finally, we have backstage news on Santana's current AW status. It seems as though, at least for right now, Santana remains under contract for AEW, according to recent reports from Fightful Select. Santana is currently still with the company and has been paid for the duration of his injury. This may come as a surprise to many fans familiar with Santana's morale ahead of his injury. The former Inner Circle member was seemingly counting down the days until his AEW contract expired in tweets that have since been deleted before being sidelined last June. Despite him currently still being a part of the Tony Khan-led company, the question of whether or not Santana plans to remain with the company when he eventually does fully recover remains unknown. Fightful also reports that it is very possible that Santana's contract was meant to expire late last year, but has been extended due to his time away to deal with his injury. While Tony Khan has not made any public statements about Santana's injury since last summer, Fightful suggests that the AEW president is consistent regarding his policy to continue paying injured wrestlers regardless of the nature of their contract. Here's my whole thing. If Santana does come back, and again, just like Brian Cage, that's up to Santana, and that's up to San what Santana wants to do. But let's say for all intents and purposes, Santana does come back. What is he going to do? The only thing that I could realistically see him doing, because he doesn't want to be with Ortiz. Like, legit, he doesn't want to be with Ortiz. And I remember hearing about that and being genuinely upset, because I thought that they liked each other, you know? So, if Santana does come back... The only thing I could potentially see him doing is either going on a solo run or teaming up with Eddie Kingston because I'm pretty sure that's the only person he genuinely still likes in the company, right? So if he teams up with Eddie Kingston, there's almost like this, this, like, uh, what's the word? Sour taste that I feel like he's going to have because him coming back and then immediately being, I don't know, immediately being lumped in a tag team. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like that wouldn't sit right with him. Maybe it would. Maybe he does want to come back and be in a tag team. But low-key, if he does come back in a tag team, I don't know if, like, anything is going to happen. Because FTR, right? FTR are still the tag team champions at the end of the day. And I highly doubt that even if uh, uh, um, Kingston and Santana, right, did challenge for the titles they're not gonna win right so the only other thing that i could potentially think of is that you give this guy a solo run but then you would the end goal would have to be a championship it would just have to be because there's no way that this guy's gonna be on rampage and he's gonna be in a feud and then he's gonna stay on rampage and then be in a feud and then you're gonna see the guy on dark right and i don't know it's just like I, if Santana were to come back, it would he would have to be involved in something. It just wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for the guy to show up and he just and just nothing really happens. Because all it would really do is just make him more disdainful. That's a word, right? I hope it is. More disdainful for AEW, right? It would just make him be like, ah, oh, what am I doing here? Nothing's really happening. They don't really have any creative plans for me, and the creative plans that they do have for me, right, aren't really anything, you know, to to, to gawk at. So I might as well just up and leave at this point since there's really nothing else for me to do. Unless, unless he goes to Ring of Honor. But again, is he going to be on a solo run? Is he going to be in a tag team? Is he going to be happy if he's in a tag team? Is he going to be happy if he's in a solo run? These are questions that we have to ask ourselves. These are questions that Santana has to ask himself. These are questions Santana has to ask Tony Khan. Because I highly, because at the end of the day, this is a person. He's not an AI. He's not just going to go in there and Tony Khan's just going to make him do whatever. He's going to be like, okay, you know, like that's not how this works. He has to go into a sensory deprivation tank and he's just got to sit there and he's got to think to himself do i want to actually what do i want to do well why do i want to do this how do i want to do this you know what i mean he has to come to that conclusion and i think if he's able to do something like that then santana will be able to you know uh you know guide himself to wherever you know he feels as though that he should be going what are we talking about? There's a hiring freeze, but I don't think the hiring freeze is anything to like scream and cry about. I think there's just a hiring freeze right now due to the whole legality of the situation. So once, you know, I mean, I guess, I don't know, once, uh, um, I genuinely, well, okay. I thought it was because Vince McMahon was coming back. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's a, I don't know why I keep forgetting that. They don't have, what's it? A senior vice president of talent operations and strategy. Once they have a senior vice president for talent operations and strategy, then, you know, I think that we're going, but that was in 2020. I don't know what I'm talking about. 
I can see this is my whole thing. I don't understand why the hiring freeze is, is happening for as long as it is. That's why I'm not really worried too much about it because I think the hiring freeze, I think that it's not really that big of a deal. I think we, as, as if it's like two weeks, right? Since me talking about this and we're still on hiring freeze, then we can worry about something. But other than that, I don't really think it's that big of a deal. So there's a brand split. I like it. I don't know why Alvarez and Meltzer don't like it. To be fair though, I understand why they don't like it. I think that it's fine as long as they stick to the brand split and there isn't a whole lot of like, you know, hopscotch and back and forth and hot potato and all that sort of stuff. The wild card situation, as long as that doesn't happen, we should be totally fine. Again, Santana has to, uh, you know, solidify himself, right, with what he wants to do and where he wants to go and why he wants to be there and what type of creative uh, journey he wants to go on. Once he figures all of that out, then I feel like he'll be able to go to Tony Khan, he'll have a concise clear plan and and tony Khan would be like all right that's a concise clear plan let's work it out you know what i'm saying let's do that okay and then once that sort of happens then we'll see what santana wants to do and it really only depends on what storyline santana ends up dealing with so we're just gonna have to wait and see folks that's gonna do it for this episode hopefully wow hopefully everybody has a wonderful tonight and a wonderful tomorrow and as always big hugs big hugs all around